The steam engine was a product of the Industrial Revolution, and it radically transformed the fire service during the last half of the 19th century. The first steam fire engine was manufactured in England by Braithwaite and Ericsson in 1829, and the City of London had six steam engines in use by 1832. Captain Ericsson came to the U.S. where his genius produced the ironclad monitor, but in 1840, even after winning a gold medal from the General Society of Mechanics and Tradesmen of New York for the best plan for a steam engine, his plans never amounted to anything more than just that, plans on paper. In that same year, Paul Rapsey Hodge began construction on what was to be the first steam fire engine built in the United States. Although his engine could throw a stream of water to a height of 166 feet through a 2 and 1 8 inch nozzle, little interest was shown in this machine by the firefighters of the era. Fast forward to 1852, when Alexander Lotta of Cincinnati designed the first truly successful steamer. It ran under its own power and produced as many as six streams of water. It could throw a stream of water in just five minutes after the boiler was fired, but four sturdy horses were needed to get it out of the house. Now that a practical steam fire engine was available, replacement of the old wooden hand pumping engines seemed inevitable. However, one rather large and almost insurmountable obstacle stood in the way, the firemen themselves. The volunteer firemen were too numerous and too politically potent. One did not want to antagonize them. This was the romantic age of firefighting, after all, when the strength and courage of our firefighters made them akin to our rock stars or movie stars of today. They would not be quietly cast aside with the arrival of this puffing machine. In the months following Alexander Lada's invention, the city of Cincinnati realized what a lack of supervision and compensation does to an enormous group of firemen without discipline. With each alarm bell, most respectable citizens worried about the rowdyism that ran through the streets and appeared at the fire scenes. The city council of Cincinnati voted to have a paid fire department of selected men. And on April 1st, 1853, the United States' first paid fire department went into service. The bulk of the city's apparatus was reduced, and the engines were pulled through the streets by horses. In other cities around the country, progress was slower. The firemen of New York City petitioned the city council to reject the steam engine. In 1855, a hand pumper nicknamed the Man Killer was pitted in a contest against a lot of steamer in City Hall Park. The steamer pumped water 182 feet horizontally through four lengths of hose but the hand pumper stream reached 189 feet. It appeared that the old hand pumper and human muscle had defeated steam, except the fireman tending the man killer collapsed into the street following the demonstration, while the steamer's stream remained constant with no interruptions. Well, that settles it, was the observation of an officer on the scene. In time, Firefighters realized that the new steamers were effective and not as impersonal as they originally feared. The efficiently small size of the engines allowed most of them to be pulled by hand, which was a comfort to the firemen who were not ready to be replaced by horses. The men could still run with their machines. Yet the days of the hand-drawn steamers were brief. As communities spread out, there was greater distance to be covered. In addition, a cholera epidemic in the 1800s left a substantial part of the male population in New York City too weak to pull their engines. Horse-drawn fire apparatus dominated the fire scene until the early part of the 20th century. The horses of many departments became celebrities in their own right, and they knew precisely what was expected of them when the alarm sounded. <laughs>